Some anti-gunners love trying to convince people that the Second Amendment only applies to muskets. So I decided to review one. And at first glance, I have to say, you've got to be one evil SOB to regulate someone's self-defense to this. I have no idea what to do with this thing. Where does the magazine go? Where's the charging handle? The trigger is a million pounds, it weighs a ton, and I've seen pole vault poles shorter than a barrel on this thing. And I dare not forget the incredibly long process it takes to actually load a round and fire. I've seen paint dry faster than the time it takes to load a shot. And as far as accuracy, <laughs> you can forget about it. I'd be more accurate with the slingshot. At this point, I've come to the conclusion that the musket was designed by Lucifer himself as a joke on Civil War soldiers. Or is it? Thing is, for all its faults, there's a silver lining of positive attributes that make this gun special above and beyond specs on a website. As much as I love the synthetic plastics of modern AR-15s, there's an organic beauty about an old-fashioned wood and metal gun a modern AR will never reach. Like seeing an original painting in person versus a beautiful picture online, this gun is beautiful. Sitting next to a modern day AR-15, it makes the AR look cold and lifeless. As much as I hate the loading process, I love it all the same. With a 30 round magazine that can be dumped in seconds, there's very little distinction between the first or 23rd shot. But because it takes three hours to load a musket, it makes each shot uniquely special. I'm forced to have an appreciation for each and every shot. I look at the history behind a gun like this, and I can't help but be grateful and appreciative of the people who lost their lives because of the gun's shortcomings. But thankful it served as a foundation for the modern wonders I now collect like a woman in her shoes. There's no shock when I say, I would choose a modern AR-15 over a musket any day. But as a gun enthusiast, I can never leave it behind, if you know what I mean. So the sword, considering you were alive during the Civil War era. <laughs> really? That is rude. You're gonna that is rude. That. I, I can't defend against that. I'm old. I know it. I, mean, I know. You can't defend against the truth. <laughs> Whatever. Never. No, but I, I mean, you shot a musket before, haven't you? Yeah, I have. I have. And the, the modern stuff, so there's modern inline muzzle loaders, mm -hmm. and there's older stuff, the stuff that you shot. Um, I like the more modern stuff, obviously. You know, it just takes a little less time to, to load. Just a little. I have to say that was one of the funniest reviews that I've seen you do. I mean, it was just the image of that hat and that gun made me laugh, along with the where does the magazine go, where's the charging handle, classic stuff. So, I think they called, it. It, they called me the modern-day urban buffalo soldier. <laughs> Nobody I think we did hear that. some references to that. No. But no. those little Civil War hats relative to the hat that you're wearing, it just made me laugh. I mean, Wait, so. When did, when did you actually, have you used a muzzleloader before? Yes. Okay. Um, I hunt. So during hunting seasons, they're actually muzzleloader seasons where that's the only thing you can hunt with because mm -hmm. I don't necessarily prefer it because it does take a long time to load and all that, even the modern stuff. And my inexperience with muzzleloaders, we're talking completely different than the one yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So these things actually look like rifles, but oh, you still okay. have to load them through all the right. muzzle, but it's much faster. Okay. You use pellets instead of the powder that he was pouring in through the yeah. funnel. And uh, my reload, last time I went hunting, I was in New Mexico in, in wilderness, uh, elk country, and my buddy actually shot an elk, but he was about 75 yards away. We had talked about the reload. We weren't going to actually reload. I was going to sprint to him and give him my gun <laughs> because it's so much faster. So I actually That's sprinted about 75 yards because he, nice. he had crawled up and got into the elk. And when I heard that shot, I literally got up and sprinted to him 75 yards, handed him my rifle. I grabbed his <laughs> rifle. I was reloading because I didn't know what the situation was, but it worked out well. But see, it's... With the muzzle, with the musket, there's it reloading. It was almost like an art form. Yeah, you know, like you go through the process, and it it, it was it was very enlightening. Yeah, and, and and almost spiritual in some respects. But there's nothing spiritual about trying to paint a Picasso during the Civil War era war. <laughs> I'm sorry, no. it's messed up. Can you imagine how stressful that would be? Like no, you know, I people can't. are shooting at you, trying to kill you, and you're going through that process of no pouring way. powder no down. The wad. I really felt bad yeah. because I'm 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 at one point I was loading it and then imagining like. 
there's someone shooting at me right yeah. now, and, right. I'm, and I'm trying to get the stupid powder inside yeah. the stupid barrel. <laughs> not spilling. Stupid, exactly. Not dropping the ball. And then you get the stupid cloth with the stupid ball in it. Yeah. Everything just becomes stupid. <laughs> well, you said the gun was made by Lucifer. I mean, I, I, I see that. That was, was another it funny was, line. It was a joke that he yeah. played on the Civil War. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they well, all had to deal with it, but it would have been horrible. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, it looked like a lot of fun. I would have loved to shot one. Maybe we can do that sometime in one I of the courses so. that you have planned for us. It probably would slow us down in the future like just, on our it, Maybe a couple courses. seconds. Maybe, maybe a little through. bit, but yeah. <laughs> but it was, it was a neat great. review. I love seeing the, that whole dichotomy of yeah. you yep. and modern noir and that old gun. But they are beautiful, too. I mean, and I the, want them hanging over my mantle because they are so beautiful when you're actually seeing them with your own eyes. And that's the, awesome. the one thing I took away from it was that musket. Like, the level of detailing in, involved in that. Just, it's just the, when you take wood, take metal, yeah. you made it together. It just, it, it's undeniable. You, you, you have a different appreciation with, with for plastics. it. Right. And those things were handmade. When you're thinking about yeah. what they what they had as means of making stuff back mm -hmm. then, it is an awesome piece of history. And, I, and ironically right. enough, it's just like handmade cars. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. beautiful, but they're, they're a pain in the ass. Well, that's yeah. going to have to be a different discussion <laughs> for a different day. All right, all right. We'll make it different. <laughs> Thanks, guys.